What's going on guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and I moved into a new office about a month ago and I was thinking right as I started filming that I have nothing going on behind me. I have no uh, posters, no pictures, no nothing. It's kind of boring. I haven't had time to hang up anything yet. But I got to think, I kind of like to hear from you. Let me know. Tweet me, PhoneDog underscore Aaron. And uh, let me know what you think should go behind me. Be it like a 16 by 20 picture of me or, you know, of one of my colleagues or phone pictures, or absolutely nothing, or, you know, a picture of David Hasselhoff with thumbs up. I mean, whatever, you know, just, just tweet me, phone dog underscore Aaron. Let me know what you'd like to see uh, behind me, and I'll see if I can uh, at least find it. So, but of that, I'm here with the uh, Motorola i1 from Nextel, from Sprint Nextel, rather. It's the first Android iDEN device on the Nextel network. And, you know, if you're used to Android devices, you're, you're used to one gigahertz processors, and you know a lot of today's specs: one gigahertz processor, large screen, you know, five to eight megapixel camera, Android 2.1. The i1 is you know very much a mid-range phone, and it's very much specs that we saw last year. It has a 600 megahertz processor. It's running Android 1.5 with Moto Blur. Um, you, you know, it's a, a little bit more mid-range. I imagine it'll be a little bit more, a little bit sluggish in comparison to perhaps the one gigahertz devices that are on the market, but that's what the unboxing's for, so we're going to take a look at that. But first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with not one, but two Motorola i1 Android devices for use in our One Paw Bandit giveaway. You know, I get frustrated when I walk into wireless stores and nobody helps me. I, I, I feel like I'm getting, and when they do, I feel like I'm often getting biased advice. You know, um, X carrier is the best and all the others are terrible. Or we do this well and nobody else does it well. So one thing I like about Best Buy, the advice is impartial. They sell all of the carriers across the board, all of the national carriers. Um, so you get impartial advice so you can make a decision. They're not you know, paid or incentivized by any particular carrier to promote that one over another one. So impartial advice, one of the many reasons to pick Best Buy Mobile. But enough of that. We're going to get into the Motorola i1 unboxing video right now. So here's the Motorola i1, and if you remember, it was announced at CTIA in Las Vegas in March. And you know, back in March, this was prior to the Evo launching, it was prior to the Galaxy S series launching, it was prior to the Droid Incredible launching, so there was a lot of hype surrounded around Android, and rightfully so, you know, it's an exciting platform, there's a lot of innovation going on right now, but back in March of 10 even, this was more exciting in terms of specs and overall features. Uh, than it may be now for some people. And the PR people, I'm sure, have already uh, put the SIM card in and activated it for us, but they left the sticky on. So you get that nice sound. Let's have a look at what's back here. Yeah, battery's already installed, SIM card's in there. It has a micro SD card slot. I think it comes with a micro SD card, we'll double check. Five megapixel camera on the back. The back, um, it, it may be hard to see in the actual video, but the back is kind of tricky. It's, in order to get it back on, you have to clip it right here and then clip back around. So it's a little bit frustrating. There we go. Make sure it's all attached perfectly one little build quality concern I, I would have if it's one of my devices as you can see there there's already a little bit of bending taking place uh, to the plastic as a result of clipping it off and putting it back on so you know out of the box a couple weeks of use it should be fine after about six months or a year of pulling the battery back off I don't know what would happen there that would be a concern that I would have. So here's the device. Uh, comes with my headphones uh, with a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack, like any other, you know, next tall device. It's 2.5 millimeters versus 3.5. Looks like a pretty nice stereo headset. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's a pretty nice little pair of earbuds with a. Uh, Call send, call in button there. Nice earbuds. Nice long cord. And it came with an extra clip and an extra set um, of earbuds as well. So, AC adapter, 
USB cable. The USB cable doubles up as the uh, cord for the AC adapter so you can charge it. I like the fact that they're separating these now, even on the Nextel devices. Micro SD adapter with a two gigabyte micro SD card in the box, uh, not installed in the device, so we can put that in uh, in a few minutes here. But micro SD adapter, that's a big one for me because I like to transfer pictures back and forth to the computer, so it's nice to have that SD card adapter for my SD card slot. Um, instruction manuals, service agreement, and an addenda. Let's see here. Offers two browser options. I'm, I'm reading off the addenda. Opera Mini and WebKit, uh, Android browser, both are installed. We saw that at CTIA, so that's nothing new. Uh, one thing of interest, YouTube videos are currently not accessible from the i1 which makes sense, you know, given IDEN. I mean, from, from a data perspective, IDEN was never intended to have an always-on device, like an Android device, on the network. So you can imagine with several thousand of those, downloading apps, um, browsing the web, streaming video, it could clog up the network pretty quickly on a network that's really not intended at all for data. So while it's powering on, you can see uh, right side is the micro USB charging port down in there. Camera shortcut button, side button, uh, slide button. I I believe it's for the uh, to remove the battery cover. Top has the 2.5 millimeter headphone jack and a lock button, all rubberized. Uh, volume rocker on the left. Push to talk button or direct connect button rather on the left and camera on the back. So it's got a nice sturdy feel to it. I mean, it does meet military specifications. So it's you know, one of the more durable Android devices. And it does, the rubber sides feel good. It's a right size, so it feels good in the hand. Uh, battery's low. Let's walk through the setup real quick here. That's nice of them to leave that. Uh, Wi-Fi, we'll set that up you know, later. It does have Wi-Fi capabilities. We'll set up a Google account later. We'll set up email later, and we'll transfer some contacts, SD card, all that good stuff later. So it gives you a nice quick you know, five or ten minute walkthrough to set up all your uh, accounts and Wi-Fi and other things. So there's the main screen. It's very stock, typical Moto Blur, um, not the revised Moto Blur like you would see on the Droid X or on some of the newer Motorola devices. This is the uh, Android 1.5 style Moto Blur with three, mid, three home screens and then the typical um, dock at the bottom with the phone icon and the contacts icon. So let's download an application from the market just to get an idea because again, like I said before, you know, IDEN is not an exceptionally fast uh, connection. You're looking at speeds very similar to 1X RTT or GPRS, some of the the very first uh, wireless technology, wireless database technologies. Um, so you know it, it is a little bit slower on that front. So let's have a look and download something from the market, just as an example. And as I expected, you know, for best performance, activate Wi-Fi to download and use application. So it's already warning me to do it that way. Let me set up my Google account on here. So let's download something from the market. You'll notice, you know, it is Android 1.5 again. So the market is the older design, not the one you're used to on Android 2.1. But let's just download, um, you know, something for this for the heck of it. Um, let's just say bump. We'll download bump, just to get an idea of the overall speed. You can see it's still loading, loading. Install, and the item is being downloaded as we speak. You can see it's still starting download. And so I'm not going to bore you with the whole 0 to 100%, but you can see coming from 3G or even 4G, uh, like on the Evo 4G or something of that nature, you can see it takes a lot longer to download applications. So if you're in an area with Wi-Fi, that's great. You can connect to Wi-Fi, but for those times where you're traveling and you need an application or you need to look up something, 
that could pose an issue. So I look at it on two fronts. One, if you're an you know existing Nextel user, you're coming from a you know pretty boring plain Jane direct connect device, this is a great option on uh, Nextel. Much more to come on PhoneDog.com. You can see that it's still downloading. It's at 46, 48% as I'm signing off here. Uh, we'll have first impressions, reviews, a video review. So in the meantime, tweet me, PhoneDog underscore Aaron. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions you have about the device, any of the specific nitty gritty questions, and I'll do my best to answer those either over Twitter or if I can in one of the videos. So stay tuned, more coverage to come. I'm Aaron, thanks for watching. <laughs>